good handle on like how we like to put songs together structurally, but all the songs, like the actual what's in the songs, seems pretty different from song to song. I mean, it's a guitar, bass, drums kind of a situation, but there's keyboards, there's lots of vocal harmonies, there's a fair amount of percussion, there's a, it's a grab bag. added a, a, a fourth member who is playing keyboard parts and extra guitar parts and singing stuff that we did on the record that the three of us can't cover live and I think hopefully we'll get to be writing with him and it'll be even more of a like stylistic mishmash and less just like kind of guitar driven sounding thing we weren't really doing very much for about a year we did go to Europe last year in May but we didn't you know since then it's mainly just been a matter of like trying to write new songs and sort of, because Mike joined the band basically around the time Mission Control came out. We went right on the road and we didn't get a chance to start writing together, so it took us a while to kind of figure out how we were going to write songs together, yeah. I mean, I toured with Jay a lot, so I was always around the music that he was writing. It didn't seem like that big of a deal to step in. But it was pretty cool to be able to start doing new stuff. Definitely. Yeah. Like the record that we just made, I think we're all really psyched on. It's called Identikit, and it's 15 songs. It feels more like a band kind of a record. I don't know. I, don't know. I think it's describe. varied but cohesive. Basically, it'll be a, a small plastic disc, sort of silver, and it'll be in a case, sort of a square case. That sounds about right, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in the band is really like, like we all, the influences that bear on us, we all are really in love with. And I think I, I could probably speak for all of us to say that, that those things really get into our blood. It's easier mentally to be on an indie label for me, to be on our friend's label, you know, especially someone who's as kick-ass as Kim, who does Soto. If, you, if you're on a major label, you're part of a machine that cranks out mass culture consumables and so then you have to think about whether you're a viable mass culture consumable and that is not very much fun for me so it's more it's a lot more fun to be on an indie label and it's a lot more sort of in tune with what I think is really important especially when like some of the things I think are important are kind of dying like culturally like the, the sense of like an there being like an underground or individuals being responsible for what they do and sharing stuff and you know like like a community kind of a way as opposed to a profit making way that kind of stuff is just like whatever it's totally dying I, like I don't hate necessarily hate major labels and I think if if, if a major label well I do kind of not really that big of a fan of major labels because I really love this world that we are in, you know, it's kind of a precious thing, so, I don't know, it's tough, I should shut up, I just like talk and talk and talk. <laughs>